I'm looking into this uh, drawer slide here. It's got soft close technology. So I want to find out what is soft close technology and how does it work? Because I see it everywhere in drawers and cabinets. It's in my cars, and electronic products. There's all sorts of things that move in a controlled and dampened way. And so in this case, I've got this drawer slide that uh, someone sent me for evaluation. So I'm going to be taking a look into it and see how does it work. So in this case, uh, when the drawer is opened, you feel resistance for about the first six centimeters. And then it, then it, you feel it free up and it travels freely the entire extension. And then same when you close the drawer, it, tr it closes freely until about the last six centimeters. You can, you can, I can see this tab here is catching on something here like a latch. This latch is caught, is parked out in the extended mode. But when this tab returns and pushes it forward, it releases and these springs pull it back. So evidently these, these two uh, extension springs are stronger than the cylinder. I can see that I can move the drawer faster. When I move the drawer fast, I can see it leave the cylinder. So the cylinder is controlling, is being controlled in both directions. And I can see that the cylinder is, its natural tendency is to be extended. So it's evidently spring loaded in the extension and the compression of these springs is being is overriding it. So I'm gonna take a look in, uh, into this cylinder. I'm curious to see what's inside there and how that works. So I have the cylinder removed and uh, put it in a vise. I've got a towel under it because I suspect something may come out when I go to open it up. So I'll zoom in a little. Here's the rod. It's extended and I can push it in and when I, uh, it's a, it has a little bit of force to push in and then it, it slowly extends. It's like a, I guess it's like a shock absorber. Um, so I'm going to see how I can remove this. Let's see. This just comes right out. This rod comes right out. Interesting. So on the back side, I see, uh, there's a little ball bearing Looks like that may be how the silicone was filled. I don't see any way to take that out except through the front. So I'm going to try to, there's a seal right here. I'm going to try and pull the seal out. Oh, there it comes. Looks, I see some O-rings there. And it looks like a nylon seal. Whoa, here we go. So this came out. It's a, looks like a rubber o-ring on the inside and the outside it's got some silicone fluid on it and this looks like some kind of a sponge it's got a slit in it and evidently that's how you how you load that you can put that in like that if you need i don't i guess and then there's this contraption here this looks like a some sort of valving that must be the uh the rod would sit in there and then there's these uh, wafers that look like they're made out of rubber and uh, a nylon piece. And that nylon piece is put is centered in the spring here. Uh, there's a long spring coming out. I see, I see a lot of silicone fluid coming out, like a dampening fluid. So, and I'm suspecting in the end, uh, if I pop that there's a ball bearing if I pop that in that's probably how they loaded this thing to begin with with silicone the spring keeps it shut so I'm guessing if you one or two points of failure maybe even the front seal or the rear you might start to see silicone fluid running out but uh interesting how this works this must be like a damper not sure So the entire, the silicone seal must be, uh, must be sealed by these rubber pieces. So let's see if I can get that to go back in. Let's see if it still works. Works a little bit. There it goes. Yeah. Still working. So that's interesting. It's a silicone dampened uh, shock absorber, basically. And uh, 
couldn't, I'd, I'd have to measure how, how, what the uh, tension is of that thing. So it turns out I do have a way to measure that, uh, that force it requires to compress it. So I'm at 200 uh, grams. Looks like I can hold it compressed with about 200 grams of force, which appears to be, you know, maybe seven ounces. So that's um, interesting to notice. So since I have this force uh, gauge out the scale, I was interested to see how much force it would take to move this this whole assembly. I'm sure it would, you know it'd be a lot more once it's loaded, but just the basic assembly itself. I was just curious. So it's moving, uh, starting to move at around 800 grams, which is about 22 ounces. And uh, it hadn't gotten to the point of uh, latching yet. 800, uh, let's see, 850. 850 is about the amount of force it requires to fully extend and overcome the springs and then get to the point where it latches on its own. So that's about 32 ounces of force. And so there's a, there's gonna be two of these on each drawer, so you would double that that amount of force that would, of uh, required to open the drawer. Plus I'm sure once you load the drawer down, uh, there's gonna be added friction involved in that. So I've turned my attention now to the, uh, the spring-loaded guide and the latching assembly. I can see it's developed a crack here. I don't believe it's anything I've done. Maybe it has, but uh, it's a lot, it's fast now. Like uh, there, there's no more hydraulic dampening. So the, the spring catch and uh, feature works, but it's very fast. And it may be that why, maybe it's snapped and uh, crack this plastic. So that might be another failure, like if your cylinder goes to leaking and uh, no longer dampens the mechanism, then you might also then develop a crack in this guide and spring-loaded catch. But this is also what help. this is what retains the drawer and keeps it in the retracted, like in the closed position. These two springs here hold the drawer fully and fully to the rear. And uh, they, they pull until they, they apply force until it gets to the point where the latch is caught and ta it, it, this uh, toggle catches and then it's then it uh, slides freely it's interesting to notice how these are assembled too the there's little tabs in the metal that look like they're punched in and these devices just simply uh, slide into these tabs and that's how you assemble it like you could you could basically uh, pop this up, remove that, and then maybe slide these two forward and remove that. And so it looks like a very quick, there may be, they may actually tap those down to lock it. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna pull that up anymore. It might break it, but it appears that's how, that's how it was assembled. So that's the soft close technology, pretty interesting. I always suspected it was some sort of silicone fluid dampened cylinder, but this first time I've ever really looked inside to see you know, exactly what's going on in there. Pretty ingenious what they've got here. And I guess that's why you see them everywhere.